Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. And welcome to Pod Mavericks presents Group Therapy. I am Kirk Henderson, editor in chief of MavsMoneyBall.com. I believe I just spent some time with some of you in our uh, the first kind of uh, one-off show I've ran in a while. It was an episode of Kirk Your Enthusiasm with Logan Thompson, one of our draft aficionados of MavsMoneyBall.com. If you have not heard that yet, you are welcome to check your podcast stream or check the video page as it is going live. Now, this is our group therapy, which I've been running every Friday afternoon for a couple of weeks now, trying to bring in some of our European guests who don't uh, often get to stay up as late during the regular season. Uh, you know, we're still kind of in the weird dead zone, but uh, you know, I figure we might talk for a half hour if anybody has some Mavs comments and things they'd like to talk about. I know I, for one, would like to really enjoy uh, the fact that the... Denver Nuggets just beat uh, the Phoenix Suns, and the Suns went out sad again. I enjoy that level of uh, uh, schadenfreude because they were really rude, and I don't like them. Um, I see we already have one guest. We've got a couple more waiting, so I'm just going to not waste any time and bring folks up on stage. I might only have about a half hour today, folks, um, but we'll see what's going on. First, I'm going to bring up Chris, who looks like he's driving because that's not safe. Chris, (laughs) what's up, man? Hey, can you hear me? I can. Okay, okay. Um, I was just going to say, what's up? I just forgot to put the notifications on the last couple uh, live uh, podcasts. So, um, yeah, we got Tuesday coming up for the the draft lottery and all. So. I'm pretty excited well, about that. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. 80% chance of keeping it. So, mm-hmm. we're going to have a live uh, show. Crossing. Yeah, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be in that. So, so we can suffer together. To now I'm optimistic. I think well, we're going to at least keep the pick. I have this – I don't know. I have this feeling we're going to get Wimby for some reason. Maybe that's just being super optimistic. But the fact that we've never moved up in the draft, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. But um, it was funny last night how the Suns got their ass kicked by the Nuggets, almost exactly how the Mavs beat them last year. So that, I mean, at least they scored fun. more than 27 points in the first half. So they're making progress yeah. in, in games where they get embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think the odds are? I, I This just has a – DeAndre Ayton gets traded to the Mavs just written all over it. I don't know. It just seems like they're like the, – the Mavs like the only team, especially because we need rim protection. Well, uh, either him, him – and then Chris, Tim McMahon wrote that Chris Paul is probably going to be very available. Um, the the fact that Chris Paul is available were, doesn't worry me because I think Chris Paul would kind of bring a sense of professionalism to Luka. Whoop. My uh, my man exited out, but that's all right. We'll we'll invite him back in here if he has time. But yeah, the 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 Suns' whole situation is just like when you go out sad two years in a row, and you have new ownership, and you've traded everything under the sun for Kevin friggin' Durant, who 
really got bodied up pretty hard by Aaron Gordon. I was kind of surprised by that. I mean, I love KD, at least KD's game, and and he he did not play very well in that series. Um, obviously, he's been dealing with weird injuries all year, so it's not like he got a great feel for what was going on in that game. Uh, I see my man Brian waiting out down there, so we're gonna we're gonna bring Brian up. Brian, what's up, my guy? Hey, hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Welcome, dude. Tuesday, you excited? I am excited. It's early enough in the evening, though. The fact that they make like a five minute presentation into a half hour show just really like it hurts because it's just like you're sitting there being like, OK, I, we know who all these people are. We don't need to pan our camera over each one as they smile awkwardly. Not fun. Yeah, I see Penny Hardaway. I recognize his face. That's Penny Hardaway. I know. Right. Right. We know that's Nico. Boo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you? What are you thinking? Uh. I think I'm actually kind of optimistic, not just that we like, obviously we have an 80% chance of keeping the pick. I think we're going to keep the pick. I think that's pretty safe. I'm actually pretty optimistic that we move into the top four. I Obviously not one. We're, we're never going to be that fortunate. I think we're going to end up at like three or four. Like I mean, a 14% chance, chance overall. Like, yeah, it's, it's not outside the realm. Yeah. And, and <laughs> what's funny is I think that's the way really that, we get this thing back on the rails and we fix things. We trade down from that pick, get either two young guys in this draft, Hendricks and somebody else, maybe lively. I don't know. That could See, really I, help. Or I, I if, if Luca were at a different point in his career, I think they might do that. But I just like trading for more assets is just the most anti Maverick thing. It's it's not that I think they shouldn't do it. I, I agree with the intent. I just don't think they would do it. Yeah, I, so like even something like trading back for, like I said, like for Hendricks, but plus something else, plus another player, mm-hmm. or a, you know, I guess like a future pick would be the same thing. You think if they get three or four, they're moving it for a player, right? I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I think that I, you just – I, what, I, I would not. You know, I threw out the, the thing yesterday on Twitter to where if like they were to get two – would they move? Would they just seriously try to leverage Houston into the sun? Like, like go get Tari Eason and like the fifth pick or whatever they end up with and see what they could do there. That's what I would do. But I just, I, you know, Luca is like all other NBA players in that they don't care about potential guys. They care about guys who can help them win right now. And I know you were listening to the show I just did with Logan, and Logan's right. Rookies don't affect winning. And that's, that's just, it's something we have to reconcile. Yeah, I I hear that. And I, honestly, I agree. I think there are a couple of players that are going to be in this top 10-ish of the draft that are going to be exceptions. I think Casey Wallace is going to be like a positive player immediately, wherever mm-hmm. he goes. He's going to positively affect winning on both ends uh, just because he's so good off the ball. He can run pick and roll pretty easily. He's not like a, like a bursty kind of – one-on-one ISO off to score when he leaves out the way that like Maxi or Buck or Quickly like those guys were, but I think he's going to do enough on offense that the fact that he is the best defensive player in this draft, not named Victor Wembanyama, is going to pretty easily shine through no matter where he is. Right. The the Case and Wallace thing is fun in the fact of that would be two players in a five year span that would come from within about fifteen miles of one another that are in the Dallas area that. Mm-hmm the Mavericks wouldn't get because like watching Maxi score a bajillion points for the Sixers the other night pained me. It really, it, granted, I didn't even think like Maxi was not a guy I even considered back in 2020 because it's, no, like, we have yeah. a billion guards, but it still sucks. You know, it's like when a guy plays in your backyard and you don't get him. No, that year it was Bane and he was at TCU. Bane was different though, because it's like Bane and Lou, like 2020 was a different deal overall, but it's like when you had, cause you could argue you could play Bane kind of in a different position, but it's, I don't know. It just seems like all the guys that we're interested in, are like these guards and we have guards with the, the four best, best Mavericks players or assets, however you want to consider it, are guards for sure. So what else are we thinking? Uh, I'm just excited to see, you know, how the draft lottery turns out. I'm excited to, not trade for Chris Paul. Mm. I, I can't wait to not do that. Uh, I, am, I, have, I have bad news for you. I really, <laughs> no, I really Kirk, think Kirk, Chris Paul's do more likely than anybody else. I listen, man. So Chris Paul and the fourteen-year-old he like assaulted can hug it out, and we can have a big ceremony, and it'll be good. Man, so I saw like that his 
his contract is what is 30 million this upcoming year, but that's partially guaranteed. I think June 28th, it becomes fully guaranteed. Yeah. If he is in like weight. That. Yeah. And then uh, the last year is like not guaranteed at all. So we right. can just be done with him if need be. Uh, and obviously there's a Aiden thing that's been looming and that's been like rumored for a year or so now. And, you know, it's starting to pick back up and there's starting to be more smoke about that. Oh, he's going to go somewhere. I just don't know where it would be. Yeah, the same. I, I've been railing against Aiden being traded here all day, especially if it's like uh, Kyrie sign and trade, which I still don't see the point of if you've already got Devin Booker and Kevin. I, right. I just don't see Other the point. than the fact that like these guys like one another, like that would be the reason that you do it. Yeah, maybe, but even then, I, though, I would just take the cap space and ride into the sun, me personally. But getting sure. Aiden back wouldn't be the worst possible thing. I mean, I, I can't handle him personally, but he's better than every other big we have. Like, that's the hard, you know, it's like he, he might piss you off, but he's still better than everyone else we have. Yeah, like I I, I could lie to myself enough, I guess, to, uh, I guess, to make it okay. And then you go in the free agency and do what you can, try and find some minimum guys to fill out, uh, fill gaps and around them. Uh, Chris Paul, I, I, I hear what you say earlier about, him being able to bring a uh, sense of professionalism to Luca and right, you just I, you just count on the fact that he's not available for the playoffs. Well, that and for half of the season, but yeah, I, honestly, it's not even about his play. I'm not even concerned about that. I, I'm assuming this would be like Kyrie for right Chris or oh my god oh oh no 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 uh, no it, it would. I think Kyrie for Aiden, I could stomach. But for Chris Paul, no, nah, y'all got to take Bertans. Y'all got to take JaVale. <laughs> we like, cause it, it, it's, it's not even just, it's cause it can't just be Chris by himself. It would have to be Chris and picks and they don't have any picks. All they have right. is seconds. Right. So yeah, no, that, I'm sorry. This isn't a trade deadline. Five seconds ain't going to get it done. I hear you. I hear you. Well, Brian, thanks for joining the show again. Of course, bro. Thanks for having me up. All right. Talk soon. Yes, sir. All right, we got a number of people waiting. Um, next, we're going to go to my buddy Josh, uh, who I did not see at Orange Theory today. Um, <laughs> lazy bum. Now, what's going on? Hey, happy birthday, man. How you Thank doing? you kindly. I am I'm doing fine. <laughs> good, good, good to hear. Uh, yeah, no, we can't get Aiden, man. We can't spend max money on, on centers, we, unless they're Jokic. We, we know this, right? We've learned our lesson. <laughs> It's so painful because when Aiton plays well, it's like, oh yeah, because he moves in space, like he guards in space, like you, like you need a big man to do, like like Jokic can't do, for example, but he just doesn't do it. It's yeah. like like Kevin O'Connor keeps telling the same story where he's like, this guy wanted his his main goal was to get his second contract and life changing money, and he got it, and now he doesn't really give a shit, and I, I sort of think that's the case. Yeah, no, for sure. That, now, that that said, I feel like we're gonna get someone we all hate. Yeah, I mean the, the options are, are are all bad. When when you're arguing between Aiton, Dylan Brooks, or like Jay Crowder, like those are your options. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of kind of you're at, you're at the shit buffet, so pick your poop sandwich. Um, Pretty much. <laughs> so uh, have you thought? So I just went on Tankathon. I hit Sim Lottery one time. Yep. Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder jumped 11 spots, which means we lose our pick. Have you yep. contemplated this scenario? I have, I have. and um, we don't. We've not really talked about it a ton because I have a reasonably, you know, acquired mm-hmm. reputation of being a doom and gloom guy on a regular basis. So it's like projecting that forward. That's why we're going to do the live show on Tuesday. So like that, if you know, if the Mavericks were to fall, everyone can see me freak the fuck out in real time. Do you think that would affect Kyrie's decision one way or the other? Oh, I mean, at that, like, like I've, I've mentioned this, and it's worth just saying again. If the Mavericks lose this pick, we we go from a slow motion car car crash, which we're already in, to that speeds up the disaster in a hurry. Um, the flip side of the argument, which I heard the other day, which I really actually like, is the next contract for these guys, meaning the one Luca could sign after this, is going to be so much fucking money that there's not really anything out. You know, it's like he would need to leave like 120 plus million dollars on the table. Like the max extension for Tatum and Brown are going to be north of $300 million. Yeah. Like, like the, are guys going to do that? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's such, 
it's the new CBA, which it'll take us years to really suss out the, the challenges. But that's that I think is going to affect a fair amount of team building. But right now, my feeling is that if they lose this pick, it it causes a cascade of disasters. So they just so don't you, have anything else. So you do think that Kyrie's decision could be affected by the Mavs losing the pick? Like you don't see a, a scenario, or or you think it's more likely that he would decline an extension with us if we lose the pick? No, I think he like I I think he's going to go where the best money is offered, and I still think that's the Mavericks. But if you lose out on the pick and then you are for it, only makes the resigning of Kyrie that much more important. Yeah. And to to have that much on Kyrie Irving, we just know the history. He might be great for 35 to 40 games, but he might get injured. He might go AWOL. There's just too long of a track record. And Dallas doesn't have enough good players to backfill. No, no, I just looked it up. Our, our payroll currently right now without Kyrie is $108 million. Mm. Um, that's insane. So our option, we're just basically going to have the taxpayer MLE if we get Kyrie, which – I think he's only with 12 million. I don't even know if we get that this year because we got it last year. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, there's some there's it depends on the, the new CBA too. It depends yeah, on which apron it depends it depends on which apron we're at and how that mm-hmm. how that affects. But, I, um, I've been I've been teasing our our, our buddy Scott CBA Mavs yeah. and I'm like, hey, like write write the thing, write the misconceptions or whatever, and he's gonna do it. But it's just yeah. it's I always tease him because he he uh he's a perfectionist, so he doesn't want to write until he <laughs> no, fully, been, fully knows. I've been warming his ear the last couple of weeks. Being like, so we will have the MLE, right? He's like, eh, probably. His best answer is probably. Uh, right. Um, right. But yeah. So, so I guess on a good note, um, you know, how happy are Mavs fans watching Devin Booker get clapped out? Of the- That's great. That's yeah, great. That was someone fantastic. called that. Someone called that my birthday present, and it it yeah. might as well have been because the thing I wasn't anti Suns until the stupid DNVR. I'm sorry, P P H whatever the Phoenix PH and X, like with the, the, yeah. the all cities network, they just randomly after they win their first round series tweeted out a picture of Luca and Booker. And it's like, you just want a first round series. Why are you talking shit about a team that wasn't in it? Like I'm all about making fun of the Mavericks. Like the picture friend of the show, Dalton trick posted last mm-hmm. night of uh, Luca and him wearing, you know, like hats, like they're in Cancun together was killing me. Like, yeah, we're, <laughs> we, we all suck now. Like That's the, that's yeah. the part that I enjoy, but yeah. man, the jokes were just flying fast. Well, like, I just saw some bangers last night. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm glad, I'm glad KD and, and Booker were getting some of that slander. Uh, Listen to Bill Simmons defend KD today, which is infuriating, but I, I know he was only in the minority. So I just, I like <laughs> the way I've liked KD since he was at Texas and Come I on. understand the 2016 thing will probably be the final straw for most people forever, but I just I have a soft spot for him, and I don't know why. Because a he lot of skates, guys, he skates more than any superstar I've ever seen. Yeah, but he's also out there, and he takes bullets, and he talks to people like him. Yeah. Him harassing uh, Matt Moore about who who wants to be looking at a graph while uh, while having a hoop conversation is still one of the funniest things that's happened True. on Twitter. Yeah, who wants to harass Matt Moore? That makes him more more down to earth. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll, I'll stop Thanks. talking there on that note. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. Talk soon. Appreciate you. Later, guys. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things I love about Indeed is it makes hiring all in one place so easy and streamlined so I can spend more time on the rest of my business. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed.
Later. All right, we got Krishna, then David, then Chris. Krishna, what's up, man? Kirk, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for hanging out. What's up? Happy birthday, of course. Thank you. It's good. Hope, uh, hopefully, the weather gets better. It's looking okay, but yeah, you know, yeah. like I, I went to high, I went to school here for high school and such. So it's like I was always on summer break whenever my high school, uh, whenever, um, whenever my birthday happens. Like nobody cared. So it's like I'm 39 now, and like <laughs> I'm just kind of I had that mentality forever. I'm like nobody cares. Like my wife is really into it. She wants to do stuff, and I'm just like, eh. <laughs> yeah, I, same. Like I've grown up here, so it's like my birthday is in the fall so it's like the opposite because as i got older the weather got crazier sure. during my birthday so it was like i'm not gonna do anything um it's interesting you just brought up the phoenix stuff i guess i'll talk about that i think it's just so hilarious honestly like nothing has changed for them like they're the exact same team that they were last year except in a way i feel like i brought it up when the kd trade happened like they it, it was boomer bust because ultimately they did the same thing that um the warrior kind of what the warriors did or kind of what the nets did or like mm-hmm. you gave up so much that ultimately you have to rely on these four guys but unlike the 2018 warriors where your four guys were an mvp caliber player a guy who can score 60 off of 11 dribbles and an all defensive player plus an elite passer and then one of the best you know shooters in the game in terms of like getting his own shot and instead, you have Devin Booker, who, like, Devin Booker is good. Like, he's all NBA talent, but he's just not elite in the same way Steph ever is or was. And Chris Paul has been deteriorating since last year. Aiton just doesn't ever prove himself to be, a like, a good, a great center. He's fine. He's, like, more than manageable, but he's not great. And KD, KD since the 20, I think it's 21, when they played Milwaukee, he has not been great in the playoffs. And like, I think part of it is, yeah, Boston last year, but he's just been breaking down a lot more. And he's, I mean, ability. he's an older guy. Like, like, yeah. I mean, he, first of all, like the fact that he came back from an Achilles, what, like, it was like two years ago at this point yes. and was that good is still impressive. But the, what, he's like 34 now, I think. He's, he'll so he'll like, be 35 in September. So, like, that, it, yeah, it feels contextually unfair to beat the shit out of him. And it's just like, not everybody is going to be LeBron. Sure, I, I get that. I think part of it is just like LeBron has never had a devastating injury like that, and I think a lot of that is luck. But I, I think KD is just also his build and like the way he plays. And ultimately, I don't know what the Suns are going to do. They have no picks. They have Paul on a horrific contract, mm. and they have Aiton, who probably doesn't want to be there. And you know, right. there's always questions of Monty Williams, and now you have a new ownership. Like, who knows what's going to happen? But it's funny. It's it's so so funny. Like this is hilariously ironic, though. I, I can't say the Mavericks are any better, but you know, it's just funny to laugh at. Um, in terms of the draft stuff, it's interesting. You know, I was listening to you guys talk. I personally, of um, like I mentioned in the chat, like my opinion is I want the Mavs to trade back and get two picks in this draft, or at least a pick here and then like a future first. I know that's not going to happen because the, the Mavs are just kind of diluted in this sense, like. Really, as Mark Cuban is like deluded in this idea that they're going to somehow get someone worthy of anything. And I think you mentioned it earlier, and I feel like you've mentioned it on a few pods like this idea of whoever you get, like whatever prospect, you know, and no prospect you get is really a significant contributor in their first year. Like that's a that's the exception more than the rule. And I, I get that. Like Luca is obviously going to want players who contribute right now. And I think part of the reason I don't think the Mavs will ever do that is they just have this inability to tell Luca like or or say do things even if they think Luca is going to be angry, yeah. right? Like they just feels they like this, that at least. It feels like that. Maybe they are, but like I just don't think they ever will. And I think part of it is just um, I, I think it was like almost a month ago at this point on seventy seven minutes they were talking about like we often compare Luca to Dirk just because you know they're the stars of. They're the biggest stars we've had in Dallas Mavericks history. But, you know, Dirk is more comparable to someone like Giannis in the sense that, like, when Dirk came to America, like, you know, he didn't really know English. You know, it was completely new to him, foreign. Like, he wasn't really prepared to play in the NBA, kind of similar to Giannis in that sense. And so they both kind of have a a gratitude to Dallas in the sense, like, that's where they grew up. Like, it it was like a second version of growing up. And it's not that I don't think Luca is grateful to be in Dallas or playing the NBA, but, you know, Luca had exposure to America, right. to the NBA, to all these things. 
I just don't think I think like this idea that you have to coddle him though is an extreme. I think it's where, also I think it's borderline disrespectful at a certain point too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, look at what other teams have done, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you look at the Pelicans, like they just like I get Zion like the whole thing with like the health, but they haven't coddled the dude. Like Well, and if you if you lose him because he doesn't want to play basketball or something like that, then you deal with that. Yeah, I mean, like look you at, can't force a person to do anything is what it comes down to. Like exactly. I have faith in Luca's competitive fire that a lot of these things will eventually fix themselves. And if they don't, then that's on him. Yeah, absolutely. I think what you rather have is you die by your own sword. Yeah. And you let anything else hurt you. And I think, you know, I, I always think this, the smartest people don't learn from other people's mistakes. They or they don't learn from their own mistakes. They learn from others. And that's a really difficult thing to do. But the Mavericks have not even been able to, I should say specifically, Mark has not even been able to learn from the mistakes they've made. It's felt like, and you've talked about it so much, that they've just ignored everything because they've had one success. And they've looked at it as, oh, you know, we, we've ha- we've succeeded at one time. So, you know, we should be able to do it again. And I, I don't know where it goes, but it's interesting. And, you know, we'll see, like, and I think to me, the biggest warning about trading draft picks and trading young talent to me is the is the Clippers. Like they thought they were getting something guaranteed, you know, you get Paul George, you get Kawhi. And like, I think ultimately they do that trade again, but that is going to be one of the worst trades in NBA history. When you look back on it, you gave up an MVP caliber player in Shea Gilders Alexander for Paul George, who's a fine player. Like, I, I don't mean to discredit Paul George. Like he's a great player. He's still a really good player, but I mean, that is that is going to be a bad trade and those picks on top of it. And so ultimately, I, I don't think the Mavericks, they don't have the assets to make a trade like that. But when you're thinking about this draft, that is potentially what you're doing is you're trading guys who could be, I don't think that like MVP caliber, but could be really great players in a few years. And that's where I, I have worries and concerns. Um, so we'll see. It, it'll be interesting. I don't, I don't really know. It's for me, it's just a waiting game. Like all the reports and all the stuff. It's like, you've talked about it before. Like Mavs Moneyball is not a reporting site. And it's not that I don't believe the reports. I'm just apprehensive. Like sure. uh, I'm just more waiting. Like I remember last season, like, you know, not to call out Jake Fisher, but you know, he reported like, Hey, Jalen Brunson's likely resigning. And then like a week later, it was like, yeah, no, he got, he, he talked and, about that later. He, he got worked by a source who's probably burned for life for him. Like, yeah. And, 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 yeah. and listen, that's the, the the game he plays. Like that's to his credit. Sometimes he hits, sometimes you don't. And I mean, he was certainly how, right. The Mavericks were, were getting ready. Uh, we're getting ready to send off um, <laughs> Porzingis. Like I remember Chuck Cooperstein got super pissed about that. Anyhow. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting. Like that's what that's a, that's what that game is, right? Like it happens. I think a lot more in soccer, where like uh, there's a lot more like front edge reporting. I feel like than basketball recently. But uh, ultimately, like I, I I'm not gonna sit here and like see all these reports and say, oh, this is definitively happening. And like I have my feelings on it, but mm-hmm. unless something happens, I'm not gonna get overworked about it. Like to me, my main focus is just like, just let's see how the lottery goes, and then, right. and then you move from there and. I think it's interesting. There's been mentions like the apron is really going to change things. I think for a lot of teams, um, I, I think the Celtics are going to be a team that the apron changes for them, uh, the Warriors and other teams. So it's it's like you've said so much. This is a do or die situation right now. And, and we'll see how it goes and see how it plays. I don't know. Excited to see how the rest of the playoffs go, the NHL playoffs. And hopefully the rest of your birthday is great and everyone has a good time. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk soon Thanks, then. Man. All right. Yeah. Take care. All right. Coming up next, then, is my man David, who's waiting. David, thanks so much for waiting, and welcome to the show. What's up? Hey, Kirk. Uh, it's good to, good to call back in again. I've been trying to get this whole YouTube thing figured out on my end, so finally. Uh, it finally. is. It's a real bear. I just, I, I have some friends that are like, some of the people that report to me in my real job are, what, like 27 to 29, and they're like, well, we're just on YouTube all day. And I'm like, how? I can't look at this. I have to work. 
And they're like, well, we just, we have it there and then we're working. I'm like, I, I cannot do that. So, yeah, but, you know, I, people I seem to like no this. Calls. I, I saw this at three o'clock and I'm like, I have a three o'clock standing meeting every day. And I was like, mm. thank God it ended early. I'm jumping in. Well, when we, when we go back to regular season, you know, when there's games again, Josh and I, you know, we do these live now. We'll do them live after games and it'll just be him and I. And then I'll do one of these, you know, probably 20 minutes after that ends. Um, and we'll just do this like we were doing the, the ones that were on um, Spotify Live. But spot, like, I got wind about three months before spotify live announced that they were closing and i'm like fuck i have to do something new this is terrible so well uh it's, it's good to join uh and good to see you in person um just uh you know excited for the draft hopefully i can join on on tuesday night there's a part of me that also doesn't even want to watch like I'm that's right i yeah i i yeah. was hoping that my kid would have like a baseball game or something and i would come back to it but then i'm like derelict in charge of like the things i have to do for the site so yeah, especially since we don't know, like I, you know, I like it could go any way. Like we could draft a player, uh, we could lose uh, the pick entirely. I want to keep, like, I want to set my my expectations of can we please keep the pick, just yeah. because oh, I want to yes. have stuff yeah. to talk about. Anything right. after that, I'm kind of going to see as a bump. Like, well, no, I'll I'll adjust my expectations and demand the moon. But in the short term, I just want to have something to talk about. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. I mean, yes, I agree because like I think the. Uh, you know, I bought tick. I bought back into my season ticket package last year, and I had to make a decision in March to go back in with my friend that we split it with. And mm-hmm. I was the whole reason I got them was so I could get playoff tickets. Uh, F me, right? Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, and I, I hear I hear their season ticket people were kind of like they have like a waiting list, so they're they're fairly aggressive in their sell points because they can be because they're the yes. the supply out uh, the demand outpaces the supply. That stuff is brutal. So like. So of course, you know, Luca. Wait, we made the conference finals last year. We got Luca. Like, of course, we're making the playoffs this year. Uh, so, you know, going into this, it's just like I will be screaming. And if I end up moving my seats back to the nosebleeds just because I don't want to pay Mark Cuban any more money to be a fucking idiot anymore, <laughs> I will be screaming, "Sell the team!" Like, I will have hit. I will do my best to get excommunicated from there if we lose the pick, and also don't sign any free agents. And then that comes to like. No matter if we do keep the pick, I there's a part of me that's okay with letting Kyrie walk it weirdly because I don't want like if we keep if we re-sign him, at least we have the asset and maybe he's he's gotta be tradable to somebody. Somebody else. I mean, the NBA is full of stupid owners and stupid GMs that constantly make mistakes. Uh like that that Lakers trade was just like the latest like another fleecing in my mind uh before the end of the year. So like somebody's gotta want him, right? But at the same time, I'm like but we're inept. We're the stupid GM team. So, like, I like I don't know that we like. Do we just piss away the twenty twenty nine pick and two two actual rotation players uh, for just cap space at this point? And there's a part of me I keep looking at like the free agents. I'm on uh, the twenty twenty three free agent tracker right now. Uh, funny thing I didn't even notice before: uh, Theo Pinson listed as fringe uh, in his tier, um, which made me laugh. But you know, like Jacob Podol, uh, I keep looking at him as like, I, you know, we need a big and we need a wing. And I'm like, Kelly uh, Oubre Jr. Like, I pray that we could get some people with that like sort of talent level. Like, I would rather overpay for those types of guys that at least have their head on straight and show up to work every day than pay $50 million a year to freaking Kyrie Irving. Right, right. Uh, well, and then I, you know, I mentioned this, I think I did earlier, like the salaries for these top tier guys are, 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 are to, to be very Texan are fixing to get so damn out of control that I don't think you can trade. Cause with, with in season trade rules, you have to be within a certain percentage in terms of like salaries matched. And we're getting to the point where it's like a guy like Jalen Brown and a guy like Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic are almost like your Patrick Mahomes and your mm-hmm. top tier quarterback where you can't trade because the, you can't, you know, you have to have players on your team. You, if, if you have to come within 10% of salary, you know, on a yearly basis, where are you getting $62 million of salary to send back? Like that, I, I really think that this, yeah. this next CBA just, and this is early conjecture, just might sort of really dampen the superstar trade market because you know, there, there's there's a big Don Draper sign. Like, that's what the money is for to any of these fuckers that want to be traded after they, you know, took a billion dollars to play on a bad team. Like, that's just sort of the nature of it. Yeah. 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 Well, and Luca, I think uh, you may, maybe have talked about this. I've, I've been spotty at checking in the last few weeks, but uh, he has a 
what, 10 or 15 percent trade kicker, I think, included. Luke, I, you know, I I don't I think I saw I, like, on one of the sites had listed a, like I, a like like listed a like a little like you know thing underneath uh, in the annotations. It's like trade kicker and Luka Doncic had like a 15, like 10 or 15 percent trade kicker. I'm like, so Reddit says yes. Yes. My God. Yeah. So, Could you imagine a 15% trade kicker on somebody who's projected to make what is it? It's like four, it's like 47 million in the last year. So that's like an additional like eight million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like the idea that like Luca can like I think it is like sure he can demand out, but you will have to absolutely totally fucking gut your 15%. I have yeah. never seen a 15% I know, trade right? kicker. When I saw that, I was like, it blew me away. And so, like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, Luca might pout, Luca might cry. But, like, I don't think he's going to leave uh, anytime soon because I, while there are teams out there that will absolutely trade the moon to get his level of like talent and like, but they will be almost in a, as bad a shape unless they like, unless it's like he's like 30 now and he's just got like role players around him or something. Right. But like, he's right. nowhere near that right now. So like, I just, I like the Mavericks have some time, maybe more than like the national media wants to like think about because they're, they're addicted to the right now, but sure. Um, like I'm that to me is like the lesser fear. It's just like, we'll just be garbage. That's sure. my biggest fear is we'll just be hot. Gar- like we could totally miss the playoffs again because this was the year that we could have owned the West. Sure. Um, I, I sent this via tweet. I literally got back on Twitter just to, t- to tweet at you like right after the season ended. Um, uh, so I don't want to be that guy like, yeah, I respond to my Twitter or whatever. But like there, I found something very interesting, but like, it's damning how close we came just by free throws alone. Like I wanted to look at the one sure. thing that you could control for and uh, you know, rebounds are fluid. Everything else is fluid. Depends on game state, but like you, anybody can make friggin' free throws and like Luca, like, I don't know what they need to do. Get a psychologist, get a free throw coach, get both, get these guys. Uh, like if we just had an like 80% free throw shooting, like close to league average, a little above actually, I think 78%. We would have won five more games. We would have been second in the West before the Kyrie trade. It's like, I don't even know if we make that trade at that point. Probably well, and a lot of that, yeah. And I mean, a lot of that comes on to, honestly, Luca, and then set whoever was like second. And it's like, Luca shoots the most free throws. He has to get his, he has to get above the 74% he's at right now. He has to shoot 80. And he absolutely I, has to, yeah. Yeah. But like, if if we if he gets to 80, or even right near 80, 78, 79%, close, like very close. If he gets to that level and then we get just a few more guys, like, like just a little bit of help. Like he doesn't need every, he doesn't need uh, to have a Phoenix sun star right. cast. Like just a little, like the fact that Dorian was as good as he was, I don't know. It's, I, I'm kind of getting this all off cause I haven't had a chance to, to vent in a while, but it's just like, we have, we have the guy, we have the golden ticket. We can yep. make it all work. We, they just have to not be total fucking morons and keep shitting their pants every time they get the opportunity. And it's going to drive me crazy. So that that's what my thing is why I'm like horrified for this draft pick. Like I would actually, I voted on the, the thing the other day and, and I would like to keep the pick. I would like to have a young player that we can try and develop uh, that we don't have to pay the moon to since we're already going to owe so much money on all these other players. But my biggest fear is that they use it, lump it up and trade for somebody that again is just, a distressed asset and, and that they, again, like don't communicate with Jason Kidd and he doesn't play somebody like, I don't, I don't even know who it could be, but like, right. That would be like the MO. So God willing, let's just get Wemby and take all the pressure off. I'm, I'm uh, right. right. Am I right? Let's get, let's just get Wemby right. and that, you know, it's like, it's like, I always say I win the lottery. That's my retirement plan. That's, that's where I'm at with this team. David, thanks so much for joining us. Mavs fans. Love you guys. Thanks, Kurt. All right. Talk soon. Always uh, love when people come back in here. All right, we're going to do Chris. Chris, what's up? I got like five hey, minutes. Sorry, I got one more guy waiting. So what Yeah, I hopped on prematurely on the, in my truck. No, it's funny. Uh, I mean, it's, tech, it's like we're, we're complaining about the fact that you were talking to me from your car. So <laughs> in real and re- like, you know, it's what's the old. I know he's a nobody likes him anymore, but I, I often think about Louis C.K. It's like everything's amazing, but nobody's happy. Shtick. Yeah. It's like, you know, we're talking to each other on our phone video screens. Like it's 2024. What's going yeah, on? So what, what, what else were you thinking so before about, you got kicked uh, off? So the Lakers are doing good right now. I think that bodes well for us, right? With their roster, their, why would they go after Kyrie now when they're about to probably make the Western Conference Finals? Is that you think that's pretty much, and there's not really no other teams that really have cap space that could 
really want. No, I mean, I think if I, I think the only way something happens is where it's just like if they come together with Kyrie Irving and are like, you know, would would you be interested in one of these other situations? We do a sign and trade, and yeah, the other, that that's kind of the mat. That's otherwise, like, I do kind of think Kyrie stays a Maverick. Yeah, at least yeah, at this yeah. Point. I, I hope Kyrie stays a Maverick. I mean, I, of course, we want him to actually show up and play. If he, sure. he gets, signs the contract and actually play the games and all, and not 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 act all weird or whatever, but uh. And uh, the whole DeAndre Ayton thing, getting back at that, I have this feeling that we're going to, like, get the 10th overall pick. We trade it to the Suns along with Bertans and Hardaway for DeAndre Ayton and Chris Ball. Is that a realistic scenario, do you think? I don't think anything's out of realism right now. I mean, I I was checking in on um, uh, Mark Stein's sort of – he he was having, like, a chat response thing on his Substack and – he said he doesn't really have a good feel for what happens with Chris Paul, but I, I do think that that he said something along the lines of like maybe Aiton is is possible. I, I I didn't really I didn't read too much into it. Um, one of the the Mavs film room guy asked him a question, but I was like, I'm very I always try to do like three things at once, which means I don't do anything well, and I was doing that while talking to David, same, so I, I could have missed it. So someone can go find it and and tell me what's up. So yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't want to say no. Um, yeah. is the answer. I mean, yeah, Chris. I mean, yeah. Every time the playoffs happen, he strains his hamstring or groin. Sure. Right, he's the old. Whole problem, obviously, with the Mavericks is that we don't need another point guard. We need some fucking defense. We need some rim protection. Right. Just rebounds and all. Um, so that that's all I have. I'm just we're all like, just excited about Tuesday. Just uh, at, least, at least to know that we keep the pick. We don't want to have to give anything back to the Knicks. That's right. So looking forward to that. I think the next. Oh yeah, I'll probably try to catch a Stars game soon because they're what they're up. Three two against the playoff hockey. Playoff hockey. So yeah, playoff hockey is one of the best best things on the planet. Yeah, so. yeah. I've actually never been to a Stars game. I did live in DC like you have before. I've been to some, Cap- some Capitals games and all back in 03, 04. Um, But yeah, and also uh, next time I'll be up around Dallas area. We Metallica. Ooh. Yeah, they got like a two night event in Arlington. So that's awesome. Uh, Cowboy Stadium. So I'm looking forward to that. So. But uh, oh. yeah, yeah I'll, I'll attend this uh, live stream for the draft lottery. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'll have it posted probably by Monday afternoon. Got to figure out with Josh what time we actually want to start because I don't want to be like staring into the void while we're going. Yeah, I'm like whole waiting whole for something to happen. On YouTube. So anytime you guys are doing this, I'll, I'll be, be ready to hop on with you guys and I'm looking forward to it. So all right, appreciate it, man. Talk soon. All right, last but not least is my man Brian. Uh, you're gonna send us out of here, Brian. I got like two minutes. So what do you got? I will try to fire away. Can you hear me okay, boss? You sound great. All right, fantastic. First off, happy birthday. Thank you. Can I finally get my Theo Pinson takes off now? Sure. Okay, I don't know if anybody's brought this up. And I didn't see what you uh, your opinion on was this, and I'll try to get it real quick. So for those that didn't see it late last night, uh, Theo Pinson decided to go on a uh, podcast stream, and I guess he had uh, Reggie Bullock jump on. Of course, they were uh, of course laughing and clowning on Phoenix, like everyone should be, I guess, to a point. But I saw that, and that really bothered me. I'm trying to articulate and process why that bothered me, and I think it was a couple of things. Well, one, because there's a player that's like semi-important for the Dallas Mavericks right now, like clowning and laughing. And I, and then of course we have a podcaster on the active roster, which is sure. you know a whole other problem. Shout out I to was podcasting. Lo- shout out to podcasting. And I was looking and trying to process that, and I was like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You two have not done anything in a month. They Phoenix fell on their ass again, but they made the second round. You guys got your ass kicked by Charlotte twice. Twice. And couldn't even make the fucking play-in game. So it's pretty brutal. I, Pretty brutal. So, and I apologize for going two footed in on Theo. I should have went more on Reggie because we should have known the season uh, that he was going to have and the Mavericks were going to have was were going to be a disaster. Because if anybody wants to go back and look at Reggie Bullock's tweets, he actually started the season one oh and one shooting before oh, the yeah. season ever started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty so, pretty rough deal there. Uh, I mean, but the, the, like am I being a, a grubby bastard for that bothering me? But No, I, I, no, because like everything everything that 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 Theo does is annoying at this point. Like he's just yes. he's not for, he's not for me. 
the end. Yes. Let, let me preference. I'm sure Theo Pinson, the person outside of basketball, is probably a nice person. But I would everything... love to yell at Theo Pinson. And I would love to be like, what is it you think you do here? And he'd be like, well, I made it this far. Eat shit, Kirk. And I'd be like, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yes. And I, I think that what he tries to be is what – Cuban art like the vibes comes out from the organization and I think I hate him more for that because he acts like a child you know and then Cuban of course like you know it, you're gonna do whatever your elder does so if Cuban's gonna act like a big piss baby they're gonna be like oh we're gonna act like children too like it just like grow up a little bit you know what I mean like sure uh, I do that, it it just really bothered the hell out of me. It, like if that, if that was Luca tweeting out or putting a story sure. of looking at Booker, it's fine. He's got skin on the wall. You doofuses do not have anything on the wall. Like, I, yeah, I have a hard time because it's like I'm here making content on a Friday, so like I can't hate on the fact that they're doing the same shit as me. Outside of the fact that that's not their real well, this also isn't my real job. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I get why it annoys you. I have a hard time because I otherwise I'd be being being a hypocrite. Yeah. So, but. We'll get out, buddy. All right. Thanks, Thank man. You. Talk soon. Birthday, yeah, appreciate it. Okay, we're gonna end on uh, we're gonna end on on doing Tankathon. I've been meaning to do this every time, and I just keep forgetting because I forget. Um, let's go over to Tankathon. Share the screen. We got the lottery. Here's the Dallas Mavericks. Let's click Sim Lottery. Blah. Yeah, Mavericks stay at ten. That's interesting. Okay, this is a wild lottery. San Antonio first, Orlando second, uh, Washington. F- Third, coming up from fifth, Portland uh, uh, moves up to four. Detroit falls all the way down. So does Houston, Charlotte, Indiana. Anyway, all right, team, this has been a lot of fun. Um, Thanks so much for hanging out with me on this Friday afternoon. Uh, Be sure to check your podcasts and download both, even if you uh, aren't planning on listening, because that sort of thing helps me out. Also, be sure to listen to the ads. Uh, We will be live sometime on Tuesday before the lottery where we will watch the lottery together, though I obviously won't be able to stream it because I don't have the rights, but that doesn't mean we can't react in real time. Be sure to tell your friends, subscribe and like the show. That sort of stuff has been very helpful to us. We will talk with you guys soon and go Mavs.